We all have spirit guides. They're here to guide us, watch over us, and help us through life's journey. Um, everyone has at least one master guide, but at various times we can have more guides step forward to assist us. There are many signs our loved ones will send to us to let us know that they're around. They can be as simple as finding a feather, hearing a song on the radio, having an inspired dream. Listen, he sends a lot of love to you from the other side yeah. and he wants you to know very strongly that he is around and that he is assisting you. Please, and he says to me, you know, you talk to him when you're in the car and he can hear you. So the message is to keep talking to him in the car. He just kissed three fingers now, but I feel anything say he's pulling back now. So I don't know if it's because you're one of three children, have three yourself. There's a connection to three, love. What's the connection to three? He keeps showing me. He's got three daughters. He's got three oh, daughters man. and you're the younger daughter, aren't you? Because he says you're his little girl. Well, let me leave his love with you because he's pulling back and I'll give you a hug. You know you stay well. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. One of the great ways to become more in tune with the spirit world is meditation. Simply by meditating and opening up and being still, you're more able to hear the message. You know, busyness is like deafness to the spirit world. I find children are more in tune with the spirit world than say adults because they're still so fresh from coming here from the spirit world. And the other thing is too is that they haven't been conditioned by say cultural training or religious training and so they're very open and receptive to the other side. People often ask me, when was the first time that you started sensing spirit? From the time I was three I'd see what I would call green people and of course as I got older I realised that they weren't green people, they're actually the spirit people. My first prediction was that my mum's kitchen was going to be overrated with ants. I was outside playing in the sand pit and I had this sudden urge to race inside of her to warn her that the ants were coming. And of course she thought that was really overactive imagination, but the next day my prophecy came true and covered water walls my mum's kitchen in ants. For me, being in contact with spirit is part of my everyday life. It doesn't feel any different to me because it's all I know. You know, since the time I was three, I would see green people. And so I don't walk down the street without being in touch with the spirit world or, or go about my day without being in touch. To me, they're a part of my everyday life. But I definitely feel more of a sense of comfort, for sure. To know that my loved ones are there assisting me and to know that there is life after death and to know there's a world beyond this one, it brings me great joy and comfort. You know, through the predictions and through the readings that I've given and the messages I've passed on from the spirit world, the validations I've given really confirm that ourselves do go somewhere, that there's more to this world than just the physical us. There is a soul and there is an afterlife. The difference between a psychic and a medium is that a psychic is able to predict future events, whereas a medium has a direct line with those who have passed over into the spirit world. People say, how does the spirit world communicate to me? So the spirit world communicates to me in a number of different ways. I see, hear, feel, smell, taste, touch and sense what's coming through as it's coming through. My job as a psychic medium is to sort of piece together the pieces of a psychic puzzle that paint the message or paint the picture for the client or the person who's having the connection or having the reading. Skeptics always have their place in the world. Everyone has their place in the world. But I often say that for those who believe, no proof is needed. And for those who don't, no proof will be enough and so therefore no proof is ever possible.